Om is a state in which everything is quiet. Om is a state in which everything is silent. Omkar or Om is the very root, the very source of your existence. You are what you are because of Omkar. What you see, what you listen, what you speak, your words are all a fruition of Omkar. Omkar is the very beach, the very seed, the very source of everything that exists. Omkar is the source of all manifestation that is there on this planet. Omkar is a very powerful vibration, a very powerful sound. Especially for all of us, for human beings, for plants, for animals, for any kind of life form, even for the inanimate forms like the mountains, the trees, it is all very, very special, very, very important. You cannot mimic Omkar. You cannot copy Omkar. Omkar is unique. There is only one Omkar. There are no two Omkars. And that is one of the hidden meanings of the Advait philosophy that there is only one truth, there is only one Omkar. It is because of Omkar that you and I are today considering each us as two. It is the Leela, the games of Omkar. And it is because of Omkar only that I and you are here. And it is Omkar only that has given birth to I and you. I and you are nothing else but the tradition or the manifestations, the creativity of Omkar. And that is why, my dear friends, sadhana or dhyan is very important. Because it takes you back to your source. And once you get even near or close to your source, once you even get in touch with your source, once you are even, even able to touch it, to experience it or to feel it even for a fraction of a second or a few seconds or a few minutes or a few days, it doesn't matter how much. You can then understand, accept, embrace the fact that this is the fact, this is the truth, this is the reality. Omkar is like the mirror in which you can see yourself. In fact, if you take a sneak peek inside yourself, then the inner you is the mirror in which you can see what's going on. What's going on? What's going on? 
you can take a sneak peek right now. Close your eyes and go into the darkness inside. You don't have to make any effort to meditate. You don't have to try or do anything. You just have to close your eyes and look inside. You don't need to create some light or some kind of visual form there. Whatever has to come up will come. If there is something, if there is nothing that is to come up, nothing will come up. There will be kind of darkness, you can say, or an emptiness. Like with open eyes, you can see a lot of things. You can see the sun in front of you, places around you, the bodies around you. Hmm? You can see the colors, the color of the sky and how it is different from the color of the cloud. You can see so many things. You can even see the color of, your, of the dress you are wearing. But once you close your eyes, then if you are still seeing those type of things, then it is pure imagination. You are just trying to imagine. Don't imagine. And now, look inside. Without any imagination. Without any visualization. What is visualization? Visualization is like imagination only. It's just a term that is used these days. Visualize. Why do you want to visualize? Just see what's there. Why do you want to see something which you're not seeing? In fact, try to see that which you can see. Why create something? For God's sake, we have been creating all the time in our life. For some time, we have to give our logical mind a rest. Let it rest. Let your logical mind go to sleep. Now what do you see? With your eyes closed, what do you see? To be honest, if you are sane, you won't see anything. If you are insane, then you can see a lot of things. That is a different, that is a medical issue. If you are sane, then you won't see anything. No, you won't see anything. In the beginning, initially, you won't see anything. It's not that easy to see something, to go somewhere, to travel somewhere. It's not that easy to do something inside, from inside. It's not that easy. So for some time, give all that a rest. Let it all rest. Let it go. Let your spiritual aspirations, your imaginations, your visualization, all that you have learned, let it all go. Float it in the Ganga, if you can. The Ganga is flowing inside. There's a Nari that is flowing inside. Nari means the channels which carry Prana. So the Nari's are flowing inside. The rivers are flowing inside you. Nari is like what? Nari is like a Nadi. Means it is like a river. In this river, in the river that you see outside, like the Ganga, the Yamuna, what are you seeing? Or the Thames, the Danube, the Nile. 
वो जी उसी ब्रह्मपुत्र द महानदी द पद्मा इन दीज रिवर्स वो जी उसी यू सी वाटर फ्लोइंग एंड वाटर इज द सोर्स ऑफ प्राण एंड इन द नारीज that have been mentioned in the yoga sutra also that there are 72000 nadis in your body in the nadis inside you what is flowing pran pran shakti una what is pran shakti what is pran shakti? pran normally means life is in there it is because of pran that you can do so many things that you you can experience so many things as a human being hmm? pran is important it is a probably of utmost significance for any human being It doesn't matter how much spiritual you are or how bad a person you are how good a person you are how bad a person you are that is separate but in everyone pran is important just like when war happens it doesn't matter how good a person you are how bad a person you are you are going to get affected when inflation is happening prices will go up it doesn't matter how good a person you are how bad a person you are it's going to affect both of them both of them won't like that to happen prices hitting the roof no one likes that In the same way these things are scientific facts it doesn't matter whether you're a good person or a bad person whether you're a drunken addict or you're a very morally ethically correct perfect pure human being a pran is the same pran treats everyone equally the only difference is how do you treat yourself how much time do you have for yourself do you have time for yourself if you don't have time for yourself you're a fool is that simple a thing because if you don't have time for yourself then time will not be in your favor if you don't have time for yourself time will not run in your favor will it let's say If you don't have time for yourself then you are not important for yourself then you are not going to work in your favor which is kind of weird and strange isn't it but this is also a fact human beings do behave in this way it is very common it is very general it is happening on a mass scale on a very large scale maximum percentage of people are like this they don't have time to sit down quietly and just breathe nobody has time to breathe in fact sometimes people are struggling even to catch their own breath that is why sometimes people say to other people now They at least catch your breath man people don't even have time to catch their own breath they they are in such a hurry and hurry leads to worry get out of this hurry and worry business man at least even the busiest man on this planet if that man does not have time for himself then how does this business or this involvement 
or this huge business that you're running, how does it help you? It does not help you. Maybe helping other people, it is not helping you. So it is very important to have time for yourself. It does not matter how big a VIP, very important person you are, whether you are a marketing executive or a chief executive officer or a managing director of a startup or a private limited company or a profit making company or a loss making company, it does not really matter how big you are, how small you are, how medium you are. It does not matter. Economics is there. The most important thing is you are alive. And that life is the most crucial thing. Just eating two square meals or three square meals a day, drinking coffee or tea two to three times a day, drinking water or glass four to five times a day, going to the loo, taking a shower, it's not enough, and going to bed for six to seven hours every day out of 24 hours, this is not enough. Okay, you can argue, I'm taking out six to seven hours of sleep, I'm taking out two to three hours or four hours for other activities of mine. That really does not work. Just for eating food, everyone is eating food, no? Do you think those who are observing these things, don't you think they eat food? Don't you think they go to bed? Don't you think they take a bath? Don't you think they perform some karma or action? Don't you think they can also think? All of this is being done by them also. What is your problem? You have to get out of your, this problem. You have to reanalyze your life, your journey, your daily life. And as I am talking to each one of you, I am talking to each one of you. So this is for you only. Whoever is hearing it, it is for that person, not for the other people. Don't think about the other people. Think about yourself. If you are listening it, it is for you and you only. Not for your life partner, not for the other members of your family, not for your friends, not to the people you are forwarding it to. No, it is for you. Focus on yourself. Where is your focus? Focus means dhyan. Where is your focus? How much time do you spend to focus on yourself? Focus on your breath. Do you breathe? If you are breathing, which you obviously are, have you observed your breath? Observe. Keep observing. Don't try to do something with it. No. Don't try to do something with your breath. Just observe it. When we say observe your breath, it does not mean you have to do something with your breath. Some creativity, apply some creativity to it. No, no. Visualize something. No, no. Nothing like that. Just observe your breath. Just observe. Om. Oh.